made even before that. So a lot of times we do tests with um, scratch dialogue. That is dialogue that's not even final. Sometimes you use dialogue from other movies. You know, if you think, oh, you know, um, Merida in Brave, she has a Scottish accent. What does a, a young Scottish woman sound like? And how do they act? So I think we took some dialogue from the film Train Spotting, which is very different from Brave. It's a, <laughs> anyway, we took some dialogue from that and we animated Merida with that dialogue before we even had the final actress. In fact, the original actress for Merida was um, Reese Witherspoon. And ultimately, she didn't work out, both for artistic reasons and for schedule reasons. So we actually then moved on to um, Kate McDonald, I think her name is, but uh, a different, we chose a second actress. Um, doesn't mean we weren't animating, but we couldn't make a shot final. You can never make the shot final until you have the final dialogue. Uh, fortunately, though, there's also shots that don't have dialogue, like Wally. We got a lot of that animation done early uh, without having to record anyone. But typically, yeah, a shot is not final until we have the dialogue recorded. And this is different, I know, from um, from Japanese animation. Believe it or not, in, in, uh, in, in manga and in anime and such, they often animate first and then do the dialogue after. So this is not true in all, all industries, but at Pixar, we, we do the opposite. Any other uh, questions? This yeah. might be too general of a question, but uh, how do you, like, with workflow and so many different teams working on, like, maybe more specific files together, how do you manage, like, all these people with the workflow and, like, editing files? Do you check stuff in or? Yeah. That, that's a very good question that perhaps doesn't get talked about enough. Um, it seems like it'd be a real challenge. Yeah, it is. So it's worth noting we have um, all the pipeline I've talked about have been the roles of technical directors and artists and animators. We also have a systems engineering department and as well, sorry, a systems department as well as a software engineering department. And we do create a very um, centralized structure for how that share work, and also it's similar to being a system administrator. You know, a lot of that work comes here. So what we do is we use a software called Perforce. Perforce is a source control thing where we actually have a main server that has the files that we check into and check out from, and then put comments, and we maintain many versions of the files. Perforce is commercial. There's also free versions of this kind of thing, like, um, have any of you guys heard of uh, GitHub? G-I-T, GitHub. It's actually a website where you can upload files and you can have versions of it. You can check them out, you can merge versions together. Um, and there's a version of GitHub, and GitHub is built on a source control program called Git, which is free. So um, there's many different ways of doing uh, source control. But yeah, we, we do have a common server, and for very sensitive files, we lock the file. So if one person is animating a, a shot, no one else can animate that shot. Some files, like uh, code for instance, there's often many people that might need to work in the same code at once, and you can have multiple people working on the same file. However, you're required to merge your changes before your checking is allowed, kind of thing like that. So we do have different policies but um, we do have another system. So that's for versioning assets. So let's say something breaks. You know, one of the funny things about working in a large company like Pixar is if you make a change to a file that someone else is doing, you could break the whole show. Other people might not be able to work if you're not careful. So it's very important to have old versions in case a catastrophe happens and you have to roll back, as we say. Um, we all, but that is mostly for the source. Usually there's a process where after you're done modeling and you're rigging, you run what's called a build, where a bunch of programs run that change the way your asset is and delivers a version that other people can see. And that built out version we have under something called change isolation, where we have different um, numbered versions of the asset. So let's say we make a teaser for a break and Merida is not done yet, but we 
have to get the teaser done, we'll often have a specific version that is labeled called teaser for merit. And that will still persist in case we ever need to rewrite that teaser, but other people can move along. So we do think very carefully about source control and change isolation. And that's often work that our global tech TVs, uh, systems, and our, our software engineering group but for those of you that want to try some of this out on your own, I recommend using GitHub and Git for, uh, for, for managing your assets. There's also software called Shotgun, I think, that does this kind of work as well. Um, but, but I think GitHub is, is a very common one. Any other uh, questions? No more questions? All right, so let, let, let's see how, uh, Oh, I, I see some spots in there. Any questions up front? No, all right. So, ultimately, all right, so we got about, what I want to do is take a, a, a lunch break at noon. So we have an hour uh, about before then. So I'm going to get into uh, rendering. Um, I'm going to introduce rendering, man. how about that? So I'm going to introduce the software that we're going to talk about in the afternoon, but I won't get into the details. So I'm going to move on to the next topic, which is what RenderMan is, and uh, sort of what the features are. And then we'll take the lunch break, and then we'll get into how it works. All right, so note the slides that changed. I have many different presentations that I've made and put together, so we're in the RenderMan slides right now. So first question to answer, what is RenderMan? So it's a... Um, Render Man, how many people have heard of Render Man? Show of hands. No one's heard of Render Man. All right. And a good thing we're starting at the beginning. So Render Man is, um, a lot of people talk about it as a renderer, but it's actually um, a sort of standard to which render is adhered to. So perhaps let me back up. How many people uh, know what render is? Some people have So who has used Maya? You guys have pressed render, right? All right, so that's what I mean. How many people have ever pressed the button render? All right, good. That, that, that's what I wanted to know. Um, so there are many types of ways, you know, when you press render. In Maya, you can choose mental ray for Maya. There's Maya software render. You might use V-Ray. You know, other software like Blender has its own set of renderers. Um, RenderMan is often known as a renderer that uh, picks our rights and picks our cells. Um, however, it's a little bit more than that. It's actually a standard to which a renderer can adhere to. In fact, it splits into two different areas. Um, one is like a scene description language called RIB. RIB is kind of like a Maya ASCII, but it's just a file format. The other one is RenderMan shading language, which is a language that describes uh, shaders essentially materials. So in theory, RenderMan is not actually a renderer. It's a standard to which a renderer can adhere to. For instance, you might say something like, Pixie is a RenderMan renderer. And that's a little bit of an odd concept. So I'm going to illustrate it with another diagram. So the idea is, you might have any number of modeling packages. Like modeler 1 might be um, Maya. Modeler 2, 3ds Max. Modeler 3, Blender. And if they all have the right plugin, or like a plugin that does it, they might be able to create this common format called RIP, RenderMan Input Device Stream, in which any number of RenderMan compliant renderers can create an image from. So let's say RenderMan 1 is PRMan, or Pixar's photos of RenderMan. RenderMan 2 could be 3 Delight. RenderMan 3 could be Pixie. Those are different RenderMan renderers. So in theory, RenderMan is not just one renderer. It could be a standard in which any of a number of renderers adhere to, which allows you to interchange files. That was the original idea. In practice, when we look at the renderers, one is dominant, which is Pixar's photorealistic RenderMan. So most people, when you say RenderMan, it's just called PR. So I listed some prices here. Um, these I actually have been lower, I think. 
Burger Man is now only $2,000 as opposed to uh, $3,500. There certainly are um, discounts. And note this is US dollars. I actually don't know what the price in Thailand is because Pixar, like many other software companies, goes through resellers. Um, so I'm pretty sure there's a reseller, I think it's called Altec or something, for uh, this region. However, Pixar sort of surrender man is the dominant one. There are other commercial render man renderers. Three Delight is the most common non uh, Pixar render man renderer. And it's worth noting if you try Three Delight, the first license is free. So if anyone wants to try render man, I recommend checking out Three Delight. Everyone can get a free license of that software. However, there is also open source implementations of the render man renderer, including one called Axis one called Pixie, which has been used in research, and one that was even implemented in Java called JRMan. I don't know why you would want to do that, but someone has done that. Um, and, um, but uh, suffice to say that the most uh, frequently used one is Pixar's photo research right now, or PR man. And here's an example of some movies that have used it. So I have some slides there, but um, we're going to focus on Pixar's photo research right now. One, because I know it. It's also the dominant one. And from here on, I'm, I'm going to call it PR Man or Render Man. Most people, when they say Render Man, they mean this. I'm also going to talk about Render Man Studio, which is the plugin for Maya that lets you use Render Man. So, um, this is a little bit on the details of how we sell it. But again, these prices I think are a little old. I think. Everything that says 3,500 is not 2,000. But um, there's three different versions of the plugin or of the software we sell. The first is called RenderMan for Maya. It's kind of like Mental Ray for Maya in that it, you select it in Maya from a drop down menu. It says, now you were rendering with Mental Ray, now you're rendering with RenderMan, and it translates all of your shaders and all of your materials into, into uh, RenderMan. And then you don't really know it's there directly. Ready Man Studio is more like a